permanent representative of the United States to UNESCO for his relentless support. And of course, my own team, my sound tech, Ed Leonard, my manager, Melinda Murphy, and my senior advisor, Mika Chino. I express my deep gratitude to the incredibly talented artists who are here with me this evening to perform. Corinne Bailey Ray, Esperanza Spaulding, Steve Brown, and Manu Cachet. schedules and spent hours rehearsing with me to create this very special evening for you. It is a great pleasure for me to be able to perform together with them for the first time this evening. Being here to celebrate the importance of World Heritage Convention means a great deal to me. Ever since I became associated with UNESCO back in 2001, when I took part in and performed in the International Philosophy Day, I was aware of the seminal work of the World Heritage Center and considered it one of the highlights of UNESCO's work. But I was made even more aware of its significance when I recently visited the World Heritage Sites in Southeast Asia for my very first UNESCO mission as Goodwill Ambassador. Tonight, I would like to share with you this eye-opening experience, which was incredibly inspiring and uplifting. After my initial days in Cambodia, the first thing I became aware of was not just the beauty and the importance of World Heritage Sites, it was the extent to which the establishment of these sites impacted the local community, the city, and the entire country by fostering tourism, which has a very positive effect on the revenues of the country. And I saw how the development of a World Heritage Site creates jobs for people in that community and promotes local activity crafts and arts. So the effect of UNESCO's work in this endeavor is not only cultural, it's also economic, promoting development and growth. Now the second thing that I realized was the significance of the World Heritage Sites and its bearing on passing down the history of a people. In Africa, there are griots who transmit the oral history of a culture. In Southeast Asia, it's achieved in the temples. Stories are carved into the stones. And in Cambodia, for example, the history of the land that is etched into the edifices themselves date back to the 8th century. If it was not for the UNESCO World Heritage Program, these temples would never have been restored and the Cambodian people today, including the younger generation, would have been deprived of the knowledge about their history. As many people are aware, with the Khmer Rouge, 90% of the intellectuals, including the teachers, were slaughtered in that genocide. And with them, the history and the legacy of the country was lost. Many today never learned how to read. As a result, the World Heritage Sites are particularly important in 
provided a record of the past that would certainly have been lost. This is significant from an educational standpoint, but it is also important in that knowing about your history, where you come from, and what your ancestors have accomplished has a direct impact on the psyche of a country as well as building a sense of self-worth for the people. For me, this is crucial, especially today. We live in such a rapidly changing world that having access to information about one's people, one's land, and one's history is crucial for the healthy development of a country. Even one's self-esteem is impacted. This is particularly important for the younger generation. I was also deeply moved by the kind of international and intercultural cooperation that the World Heritage Sites created. In Cambodia, 18 countries have come together for the International Coordination Committee at Anchor in order to help restore the sites and make them disaster proof. Entire temples were dismantled stone by stone, with each stone being cataloged, replaced, resurrected, so that it could sustain annual floods and various natural disasters. Without UNESCO's work, initiating the World Heritage Sites some 40 years ago, they would have been destroyed, histories lost, and international support would not have been galvanized. Throughout my mission, I was amazed with the work of UNESCO and its impact on the countries and the people. I was also deeply moved by the incredible people working for UNESCO with conviction, dedication, and most of all, heart. I keep warm memories of the UNESCO team I work with, of the directors of the offices, Anne Lamaker and Hubert Hayton, and their dynamic and courageous teams. I realize that it is because of others like this that UNESCO is touching the lives of people on the ground. I felt lucky to be in their company and to be able to learn from them. And it reconfirmed to me why I accepted being a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador. In recent years, I have become conscious of a different perception of myself in this world, which goes beyond being a musician. That might sound strange to me. <laughs> I now see myself in terms of my potential value on a human level. In fact, I'm more interested in the real value of being a musician, which is in fact the same as the real value of being a human being. It is to serve humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, my engagement with UNESCO as its Goodwill Ambassador 
is profound and, and deeply felt. However, I didn't come to UNESCO in the end. I have pledged to give my time, my energy, and my craft, my art, to contribute to creating a culture of peace. Since being inducted as Goodwill Ambassador in July, I have presented an initiative which was adopted by the General Conference of UNESCO in November 2011, the establishment of an International Day of Jazz. Introducing jazz education and appreciation globally as a way to encourage inter intercultural understanding, dialogue, and respect, especially amongst youth. In addition, and in connection with the 40th anniversary of the World Heritage Convention, my vision is to propose a series of locations where blues and jazz began from Dockery Farms in the Mississippi Delta, to New Orleans, to Chicago, and New York, as World Heritage Sites. I would also like to propose jazz as an intangible cultural heritage. human conflict with particular emphasis on analyzing misinformation and ignorance as a root of conflict. I consider it my mission to strengthen support for UNESCO all over the world and to work with UNESCO to create programs that contribute to intercultural dialogue and mutual understanding. More than ever, the world needs UNESCO. a lasting peace and a sustainable plan. 